What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, your home for all things Amazon advertising tips, tricks, and strategies to make your campaigns a little bit easier and a little bit more profitable. Uh, today, we have a great episode. Uh, by the end of it, you will hear uh, all about search term duplicates for your sponsored product, sponsored brand, and sponsored display campaigns. Uh, we're going to talk about when you want duplicates, when you do not want duplicates, uh, some common misconceptions around them and how to find search term duplicates in a spreadsheet. Uh, you will also hear me do a pretty bad Jerry Seinfeld impression. Uh, so feel free to stay tuned for that. Um, as you know, we've been podcasting for over 200 episodes all about Amazon advertising. It's a lot of content. If you want that content organized, systematized, categorized, along with all the freebies we've ever had for the show, be sure to go to the link in the description. We have a massive Google Sheet that's color-coded and organized for you. Uh, it's one of my favorite things that we do at the show, share all this content. Uh, so go check it out. It's a great episode, and I'll see you inside the Badger Den. I've launched campaigns and picked keywords. I've got my bits set placements too. Now bad mistakes. You ever watch Seinfeld? Seinfeld, the TV show? No. You don't know? Never? I, I, I don't watch TV. Can you believe that? I watch movies and series, but not TV. Okay, well, there goes my intro. I'm thinking of, uh, you know, we're talking about duplicates in your search term report. And to me, Jerry Seinfeld keeps on popping up where it's like, what's the deal with search terms that are duplicate? Like, why do I have more than one? Get out of here. You've never, you never heard of Jerry Seinfeld? None of this is landing? Mm, no, but the impersonation must be on pod because it didn't sound like you. So congrats. There you I'm go. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know what there's not, there's not enough of? Uh, I want to go to a comedy club and have it be like Jerry Seinfeld impersonation night. But anyway, maybe next time I'll have... Uh, Bigger Jerry Seinfeld fan on the show, um, <laughs> but Sorry uh, about that. yes, but you know, <laughs> duplicates in your search term reports is it good? Is it bad? When is it good? When is it bad? What's the deal with duplicates? Um, so let's actually jump into this. Uh, we've got a couple different sections here. When you should want duplicates in your search term report, when you should not want them in your search term report, common misconceptions, and then of course how to find duplicates in a spreadsheet. So let's kick things off by talking about, in case anyone's unaware, a duplicate in your search term report. It, I define it as this. I'm curious if you would define it the same way. A duplicate in your search term report means that you have the same search term in more than one ad group across sponsored products, sponsored brands, and sponsored display. Uh, anything would you edit anything about that definition? Yeah, so we're talking about search terms. Not, we're not talking about keywords or targets. So that's important to you know uh, precise because uh, having multiple keywords is another story, like duplicates keywords, I mean. so That's another yeah. episode, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah, next one. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good definition. And yeah, we're going to get into the meat of it. Yeah, so let's jump in at... You know, and I invite everyone to follow along with this episode. Like, go into Amazon, download a search term report for sponsored products and sponsored brands, and we're going to talk about how to find duplicates really quickly at towards the end of the episode. But you know, as you begin to start scrolling, you will inadvertently, uh, almost uh, guaranteed, find mm -hmm. some 
level of duplicates in your search and report, even if you're just looking at sponsored products and sponsored products alone. And here's reasons why it's okay. Um, so when you see these duplicates, you know, you sort of have two options. One, negate or pause some of them. Uh, or the first one, first option is to do nothing and continue to allow them to run. You know, we, we sort of touched on the first one and you had this really cool idea when we were prepping for the show. You know, so often we think of search term graduation as a process where you go from sponsored products auto to sponsored products broad to sponsored products exact. And you have this really cool twist on search term graduation, which it probably warrants its own episode to go into more detail of this sort of more, instead of like vertical search term graduation, like going from the, from going deeper into search terms for sponsored products, you have this idea of like lateral search term graduation where you're going from yeah. sponsored products to other campaign types. So mm -hmm. let's use that as an example. Let's say you have a search term that's absolutely crushing it in sponsored products, but it's only in sponsored products. You would want to duplicate that, right? Into other exactly. campaign types. Yeah. Yeah. You want to use the data from sponsored product to expand your impression share on other ad types. So use that in sponsored brand, sponsored brand video. If you're targeting ASINs, then use that in sponsored display as well. And you're going to kickstart your campaigns by already knowing that this is a good keyword for you. This is a good ASIN for you. And you're going to prevent some ad waste because you're going to run on it on exact. So you know, it's going to work. Yeah. So, yeah. It's and that you mentioned you've been doing this a lot lately because it's such an easy win. Yeah. Anytime you you take over an account that's been running for a while, it's such an easy win. It is. It is, and you know, it's uh, an overlook strategy, I believe. That you know, you're always running some some fresh uh, keyword research, and you know, you're analyzing all your competitors and focusing on sponsored product. Now, don't get me wrong, sponsored product is the bread and butter of Amazon's PPC. But if you want to, you know, expand your market share, then you need to be a little more creative and you want to go to for, for the other ad type. So, yeah. Yeah. So it seems like a no brainer. So I would say anyone right now who's in their search term report and finds an amazing term, uh, and hopefully you've combined your sponsored products and your sponsored brand and your sponsored display, and you've just found this amazing search term, that is a perfect opportunity for you to duplicate it and have it appear in sponsored brands and sponsored display and sponsored brand video. Easy, easy win. So that sort of is our first reason that you would want duplicates because you can expand the stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, so search, you know, I, I, I love after like so many years and so many Amazon advertising changes. It's like, oh, like bring it back to basics and go download your yeah. search term report and go look through it. There's like so much gold in there. The other thing, the, so the next reason is sort of like wanting to own the space. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me why you would want to have duplicates if you're trying to really own the space. And what do you mean by owning the space? Do we mean like owning the, the search result page? Yeah. Okay. So when you enter a query on Amazon, you'll get typically your sponsored brand uh, headline, and then you have four spots of sponsored product placements. And if you have uh, multiple ASINs that are not uh, variated, uh, we're going to touch base on that later, uh, you will want to earn as many placements as you want to really have that real estate cover up. Now that's especially important if those are your branded keywords. So let's say that you have a brand, let's say, you know, Lego, for example, they will want to have as many Lego products on the first sponsored product placements as possible. So, and, and there are going to be duplicates. And that's yeah. one good reason. So yes, so you increase your real estate on search result pages, uh, as well as you can, you can run this back on uh, product page impressions too. Um, mm -hmm. perfect example. And again, you can stack the first idea that we had, which is like this lateral search term graduation exactly. where you go from sponsored product to sponsored brand, sponsored display, where you take that search term, you put it in all three campaign types, and then you also increase, other, and then you also go deeper with it. Not only do you graduate it laterally into other campaign types, but you also graduate it 
uh, I almost want to say like in the fourth dimension, uh, where you just add another product <laughs> that that search term also applies. And then you would duplicate it that way for brand defense and sort of owning the space a little bit more, uh, which slides really nicely into the next reason to have duplicates, which is for most people, the same term applies to more than one product. Exactly. So uh, let's say that, yeah, you know, you have a product that is not living under the same parentage, so they're not variated. That's important because one uh, parent can only get one spot. So you want to have that into uh, separate uh, ASINs, separate um, families. Uh, if the same keyword applies for both products, then you're putting them both in front of the eyeballs of the customer that are looking for that. Yeah. So. Again, really easy, simple reasons that you should not be alarmed if you see duplicates uh, and that sometimes you would actually want to create situations where you do have duplicates. Um, so again, looking at that search term report, finding a great term, wanting it to also visibility, maximize your visibility for it in sponsored brand, sponsored display, easy no brainer, run it on separate parent ASINs and maximize your visibility for these great terms, reasons to do it. And the the thing here is uh, with all of these with all of these examples, both the past ones and maybe the next ones that we'll mention, is you really want to be intentional. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning, if you open up your search term report and you're sort of surprised, like, oh, I didn't know I was this term was in these five different camp five different campaigns and seven different ad groups. If that's a surprise to you, then that could be an indication that. Your structure is not great. Your, your structure isn't great. Because I think yeah. like great structure is all about intentions. Like mm -hmm. when someone searches this or when somebody's looking at that product, I want this to appear at this price. And if you don't know or if you're not in control of where these duplicates are going, uh, this is kind of a reason to not have these duplicates because you want to be intentional. So like that, that's the key here. With all of these things that we've mentioned so far, we're being very intentional about it. We're saying this is the reason why it's in multiple places. You know, you also had the idea too of like running a backup campaign. Mm -hmm. Talk to us yeah. about that. Yeah, sure. So if for whatever reason, your main campaign is running out of budget, that could be from, I don't know, a, a promotion or something, or, you know, someone, TikTok stuff, like yeah. they are trending something, mm -hmm. uh, and you were not aware of that, your main campaign is going to run out of budget. Okay, so you have those, what I like to call backup campaigns that will pick up just to preserve at least some of that uh, protection that you want to have. Uh, chances are that if you run out of budget and it's not something that you're used to, your competitors will run out and you will earn very cheap keys. That is one thing, but you can also want to appear on different placements. So. You want to own the space. You want to rank for a keyword. You're putting a high top of search bit adjustment. You're getting there. You have another campaign that will target a different placement. And those metrics that you're going to track are going to be different. The goal is going to be different. You're going to go for maybe more profitability than the first one. And that it goes back to uh, what you were saying about intent and structure. The settings would be different. Uh, the bid would be lower in the other campaign. The you will not have a top of search bid adjustment. Maybe the uh, bidding strategy would be different. You'll go for down only to really uh, maximize your profitability. So yeah, that's another uh, good uh, strategy to and another good idea to have duplicates. Oh yeah. Now let's jump into the next section here. Reasons to pause them when you find duplicates, or even negate them. <laughs> Alrighty, Clement. There's reasons not to have duplicates. Uh, very, very valid reasons. And here's a very simple one. If you are looking at your search term report and you find duplicates and in one ad group, it's converting at 45%. Uh, it's got an A cost of 15%. And then in another spot, it's converting at a 1% conversion rate and has an A cost of 80, 90, 150%. Mm -hmm. And you look at that and you say, I don't want this to happen. So that can happen for a wide number of reasons. You know, maybe one product just naturally resonates more when people are searching that. Uh, maybe it's it has something to do with uh, structure. 
and you just want it to appear in one over the other. Um, so performance is a very, very simple reason to do that. Mm -hmm. And what generally will happen is it'll stop getting picked up in that other ad group and start funneling more volume into the ad group that you want it to appear for. So this one's fairly straightforward here. Um, where sure. more the performance. So you can already start to see the act of doing this is useful. So like you want to download your search term report, you want to stack these, you want to find the duplicates so that you can make judgment calls on like, hey, I shouldn't be having it appear in ad group A and ad group B. I also love the other, other idea too, is you might want to negate it if you want to move inventory on one product more than another product. So mm -hmm. whenever we run PPC, we, we could have multiple goals, right? We sometimes, most of the time, the goal is performance-based, uh, but sometimes the goal might be, I'm sitting on so much inventory, I'd really like to move this variation more than the other one. And as PPCers, we can sculpt that traffic through the use of negative keyword sculpting. That's where we add a negative in one spot so that the traffic flows to another spot. Um, so if you want to move some inventory for product A as opposed to product B, you'd want to negate the duplicate in that other spot so that it funnels to product to the product that you do want. And those, those are in rare cases. Uh, I, I often find that most people, probably 95% of campaigns are performance focused. But every once in a while, we we, we do get inventory-based goals where it's like, hey, I'm re I really want to move this inventory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And it could be the other way around, right? We want, we're going to run out of stock for variation A, so we want to slow things down and we have some stock for variation B, so let's just focus on this one, right? It's not always the bad situation. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess like inventory management is actually quite common. Yeah. So it is another mm -hmm. reason to be very aware of this. Uh, I was mm -hmm. just in an account the other day and uh, I, I was on the phone with a client and yeah, they, they realized on the phone that due to the PPC structure, again, they were unintentional about it. And due to the PPC structure, a variant that they didn't like, uh, a variant that actually converted much poorer than the variant that was the hero, just because of the PPC structure, the variant that converted more poorly ended up with a stronger bid and was just really capturing a lot of the clicks and a lot of the orders. And that was a perfect example of it's like, oh, we need to suppress it in this ad group so that it the traffic actually funnels to the one that converts the best. Uh, and then it ended up working out quite well because now they're getting more traffic for the variant that they did want. So that's sort of like a topic. Structure. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a structure <laughs> thing. So again, the, the, the root, the, the, the main thing to take away from all of these points is intention. You want to be intentional about where your search terms appear. 100%. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And we also had this other note too, uh, for finding duplicates that relates to search term graduation again. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's a controversial topic, I would say, because a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people, they're just going to have that funnel, like like you mentioned, uh, auto to broad, to sometimes to phrase and then to exact. And then every time you move that search term, you're going to negative it in the origin campaign, the uh, source campaign. What I like to do is have that done in two steps, just because history plays a big part in uh, the performances of your campaign. So Amazon likes to, the bid plays a big part, but the conversion as well and the historical data. If you suddenly remove that keyword, that search term from one campaign, uh, you may see the performances tanked and just kill the momentum. So what I like to do is just do the graduation, uh, you know, maybe not all the steps. I think that's uh, too cumbersome, but let's say that you move that from, it's a good keyword, you move that from auto to exact, have that at a higher bid in exact. You take the, C the CPC of uh, your uh, auto campaign, then you just uh, put, you know, 10% more in your exact and you wait a bit, see if that picks up. If it doesn't pick up and you still have the impressions going into the auto campaign, continue creating that gap. Maybe reduce the bid in the auto campaign, maybe increase the bid in the um, manual and go for fixed bids for sure. I think this, the whole concept of, uh, you know, I, I think it might've been like 2017, uh, I had a post research peel stick and block where it was like, okay, you do your research in an auto, you peel out the term 
uh, and then you stick it into an exact, and then you end up blocking it from the auto. And I think, and then like maybe in 2019, I came out with an update to that. It's like research peel stick and block, which I think search term graduation is a much better phrase <laughs> for it. Uh, but um, I talked to a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm doing that research block stick. It's like, <laughs> oh man, it's like so confused. By search term grad- yeah, search term graduation is such a, so easy, so much easier. Cause it's like, oh, you're graduating it from one place mm-hmm. to another place. But since then, I, I like in 2019, I think I published an update uh, which was like, oh, maybe you'd want to wait before you block it. And then I think mm-hmm. if I were to publish another update to it, it'd be like, there's some times where you wouldn't want to block it. You know, there's some of this, like some of these like unexplained things where it's like, sometimes that search term just does so much better in an auto. And so like you can, you can start to sort of fine tune this where it's like, you know, maybe you raise the bar on what you graduate from auto to exact, and maybe yeah. you don't do it for search terms that only get like two orders a month mm-hmm. uh, or something like that. And the reason being, because it's going to be really hard for you to set a specific bid for that keyword that rarely converts in your exact. Um, so it might just be better to roll that up into your auto, something like that. So there's some considerations. It's a longer conversation for, for another day. <laughs> I think in general, like research peel stick and block as a way for a search term graduation is going to be good in a lot of cases. But I think in some times it, it might be, might make sense to either raise the bar on what you're graduating or wait on the pausing, uh, mm-hmm. adding the negative in the other spot, uh, or potentially not add it ever uh, if the bid's going to be higher in the exact one. However, an easy way to manage this and an easy way to think about this is to find your duplicates and actually find this out. So you can see, oh, I put it as an exact match over there. Uh, I'm still getting some impressions in my auto and actually it's way cheaper in my auto and actually it's performing so much better in my auto. Uh, Do I really need this extra keyword in my account? Let me pause it in my exact and just let it funnel into auto. That's an absolutely valid thing that people could come to but you'll never know unless you're doing this duplicate search term analysis. Um, so yeah. yeah, and it, it can change over time as well, right? You you do that the first 30 days, you have that same results, then you, know, you have a hunch, you wait a bit longer, and then in the next 30 days, you see that it picked up. So maybe you revisit it and you don't pause it yet. You let it run. You, know, you get a few clicks that are much cheaper in the auto campaigns because you didn't negate it. You have a great echoes there. It's fine. You don't run out of budget. That's important. Mm-hmm. You're good to go. Exactly. Which is where like, I think so much of PPC being a great PPC or is literally the act of like doing search term graduation and then setting a reminder for yourself to like double mm-hmm. check how it's progressing. That's like such a basic skill that is so important for PPC. Uh, and also, you know, you could also, instead of setting a reminder for yourself to check into it, you can just set a reminder to do duplicate finding Mm -hmm. every 21 days or every 30 days, depending on the size of your account. Like you, you'll catch it that way too. So, so much of good PPC is just writing stuff down for sure. Yeah. So we got some pros, we got some cons when you would want duplicates, when you would not want duplicates. Let's jump into the third section here and actually cover uh, some common questions that we get when talking about duplicate search terms. What's the deal with duplicates? All right, Kalon, common, common question. Can you drive up your CPCs? So like, let's take some of those examples where you would want it. You know, you have it in your sponsored product, then you have a sponsored brand and sponsored display. If I'm bidding on the same keyword that triggers the same search term and all these, all these three different campaign types, am I making my CPCs more expensive for myself? Okay. So that is a big myth. Uh, that is, uh trusted by a lot of people. So you don't drive your own bids up. Uh, If you have one keyword in campaign A, which has a higher bid because that's what you want than in campaign B, your bid from campaign B, campaign B will not drive the, your CPC up. No. If you have, for some reason, some sellers have multiple accounts, if it's different accounts, then yes, it will drive your bid up because it's not considered by Amazon under the, you know, it's uh, it 
treats it as two different entities. You know, within your own account, you don't drive your pizza. Yeah, exactly. You, you just simply don't. Um, even if you had the same keyword in two different ad groups, and even if you go into ad group A and you make the bid a dollar, and then you go into ad group B and you make it a dollar fifty. And then you're like, well, I want more traffic for ad group A. So you go back to ad group A and you make that one $2. And then you want more traffic for ad group B. You go back to ad group B and you make that $3. And then you go back to the first one, $4. Back to the second one, $5. Even if you're doing that, you're still not driving up your own landed, actualized CPC. So there's, there's a couple of reasons why you wouldn't do that. Number one, if it's for the same parent ASIN, you only get one entry per auction, per mm -hmm. brand, per parent entry. Um, so like that's the f that's the, the first thing to know. The second thing to know too is even if it were true that both of these ad groups are entering the auction, so like you've introduced basically another competitor, even if it were true, you still only pay one penny more than the person below you. So even if it were true in ad group A, you're paying, you're bidding, you know, $1 in ad group B, you're bidding a dollar fifty. Even if it were true, you wouldn't pay a dollar fifty. You pay one hundred one because it's one yeah. penny more than the set person below you. But that's not true. <laughs> like you're not you. You can't. You cannot. You cannot simply have ten listings uh, on a search result page by simply having the same keyword ten different times in your account. That is not how it works. So you only get you're you're there's your you count as only one entry into the auction uh, yeah. that's an important thing to know so don't worry about you know entering uh, the right bid that you want it's not gonna push your bids up yeah and i always say too it's like well you want performance-based bidding so if keyword you know if ad group a it's performing really well then that should just naturally have a higher bid than mm -hmm. ad group b where you're bidding on it uh, that that will have a lower bid because it performs better in the other place so it's just sort of this naturally self-regulating system where again, you are only one auction entry here. Uh, what do you what do you say to people? Well, what about when, you know, let me see if I can trigger a search here. If I go to Amazon right now and I search something super common like Nike running shoes, if I search that, okay, I see an Adidas ad. Mm, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I see an Adidas ad and sponsored brands. And then I see two Nike sponsored products. Uh, I didn't I actually didn't specify if I wanted a men's running shoe or a women's running shoe. So I actually see an ad for women's and an ad for men, right? A men's running shoe right next to it. So is Nike making it more expensive for themselves by having the women's shoe over here and the men's shoe over here? What do you say to people who would be like, look, their, their women's shoe ad would have been cheaper if they didn't have the men's ad running for the same keyword? No, they don't. No. Adidas does, though. You what's that? Adidas. Adidas. Yeah. yeah. Adidas is making it more expensive for them. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, I think there's some sort of undefined component where if you're bidding on the same search term, you're you know, bidding on the same keyword in multiple places, on multiple different products, on multiple different paranasins, and you do end up in multiple spots, I think that generally means one of a few things. One in the ad auction, the other competitors were so were so much lower than you, meaning your bid and your sort of ad quality score, which is like how likely you are to convert for that, was so much higher than your co competition that Amazon made the decision that it's actually better to, to trigger your brand multiple times than it was a competitor because you're so, so much further ahead. Do you find that to be true? No, for sure. Yeah. The the uh, amount of the bid is not the only one, uh, the only thing that uh, triggers the winning of the auction. The conversion is also plays a so big part in the winning. Now, Amazon wants to get the clicks because it gets paid on the clicks, but they are also very intentional about the customer journey and they want to have that conversion, that sales at the end, because you know that means that they are presenting the good product to the good people at the right time. And they're also getting that referral fee. So they're winning everywhere. So yeah, you could end up bidding less than your competitor and still winning the auction because your conversion is higher. Yes. And with that, let's jump into how to find duplicates. 
Alrighty, step one in finding duplicates. You gotta start with a spreadsheet. You log into Amazon, you download your search term report. And I think this is where people make the first mistake. And I know like this is only step one, but I think like a mistake <laughs> that people make is they only look for duplicates in sponsored products. Uh, I do think there's a lot of value in being aware of where the same search term is appearing for all for sponsored products and sponsored brands and sponsored display uh, for all those reasons that we mentioned above. Because if you find a really good search term, you're going to want to duplicate it in the other campaign types. So it just gives you some added additional info. And again, the whole point is to be intentional. So what's your, what's your go-to spreadsheet? So after you have the spreadsheet, right, it's, you're downloading an Excel file. Mm -hmm. Do you do the extra step and put it into Google Sheets or are you just sticking in Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Excel? Are you a, a third party tool person You're using uh, uh, open know. office or something. Open office, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's something that I, I like working in Excel. It's uh, robust. I know that you like Google Sheets. Now, if that's something I'm going to share, I'm going to use Google Sheets. But if that's just something temporary, you know, I have some macros recorded there that I can use throughout uh, on all my sheets. So, yeah, I'm sticking to Google Sheets. It's to Microsoft Excel for That's a little temporary. Freudian slip. Your, your, your subconscious know. wants Google Sheets. <laughs> Damn, I'm not, I'm not going to get my uh, sponsorship. That's sorry. Microsoft. sorry. Microsoft is, uh, I think I think they laid off 10,000 people yesterday. So okay. I don't think they have a budget for a sponsorship for you. Uh, right now. Just because they are uh, fueling ChatGPT. That's right. They're burning <laughs> a lot of money on that. So yes, I, personally, I'm always dropping stuff into Google Sheets. I like that it's like, uh, and I know I can do this in Excel, but I just like that it's, yeah, fine. Defaulted yeah. on the internet. And I think it's really <laughs> easy to share uh, and go back to. Um, so yeah, so open your spreadsheet program of choice. I wonder if there's any open office people out there. or Leave a comment. Or, da or dare I say, <laughs> uh, what's the app? Number. One? Numbers. Number. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> That's so bad. I think so. It's like, hey, let's take Excel and take away a lot of the best features. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So then you, uh, I have the instructions for Google Sheets. And again, it's actually like really easy. This is actually a very common spreadsheet function um, where you, this is actually incredibly common. So feel free to just Google how to find duplicates in numbers or Microsoft Excel. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so you just simply highlight that column. Uh, I actually have in the description of this episode, uh, the actual formula you'd want to use. Uh, it's a I think this is a cool formula. You can you can apply conditional formatting here. And basically, because the goal that we're trying to get is like we want to color all of the duplicates. And I actually think some spreadsheet programs come with like a fine duplicates, like in the filter dropdown. Yeah. So in Excel, you have that yeah. you know, conditional formatting. You just say highlight duplicates. Yes, in Excel, you can do it. They have a conditional formatting. I know it because yeah. I just did it in, uh, earlier <laughs> this week. Uh, so it actually is a little bit easier in Excel to find duplicates because they have a built-in function for it. But in uh, Google Sheets, you need to go to your conditional formatting, select the range, and apply a little formula. Uh, it's a little count if formula, which... Uh, yeah, pretty standard, right? Pretty standard. Find the stuff that has a count of greater than one, and then it will tag it uh, a color. Uh, and then put the cherry on top, sort the column alphabetically so you get all mm -hmm. the duplicates next to each other so and then add a filter by color and you'll have only your duplicates boom so you can add a yeah. filter by color and then you can only look at duplicates and be sure that you are making decisions to like get rid of any duplicates you want or you can use that to see if you have duplicates but uh it's all sponsored products so you can be like hey this is a great term it's already duplicated in sponsored products I need to duplicate this for sponsored brands as well. Uh, and then I would even get undo the filter. So you have all your colored duplicates mm -hmm. and uncolored singles. And then you can see, do I have a really high performing single that is not duplicated? Uh, and then you can make the decision to duplicate it uh, into those additional ad types. Um, well, Clement, we've done it. We did, yeah. Did we Once create more. the best content? In the universe <laughs> on duplicate search terms for Amazon advertising? I think we're on the top three. 
<laughs> I hope we covered every base for you out there, dear listener. Uh, search term duplicates. It's a task. Do it once a month. I'd say, I'd say this is like a once a month yeah. task. Every 30 days, set a reminder to it. Right. I mean, hopefully you're downloading and looking at search terms in some fashion more than 30 days, but I hope, yeah, <laughs> yeah I hope at least 30 days. Uh, that's it. We've done it. All right. What's the deal with duplicates? It's going to be in my head all day. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. Badger Nation, I'll see you next week here in the PPC Den Podcast. What's the deal with duplicates?